This way, please. Pardon, young sir, I was at my devotions. I did not hear you. I trust I haven't disturbed you. Well, don't tell me the joint's haunted. You think I'm mad, don't you? I believe you. Oh, my darling. What have they done to you? She has been dead for 20 years. <laughs> Amen. Doors closing by themselves. People talking to nothing and getting answers. I'm going back. So even if the house does seem haunted, I'm sure that... They're coming to get you, Barbara. Come on, show yourself, you coward. Did I hear somebody scream? I'm John Carradine, your host on a journey through Hollywood, a rather different side of Hollywood that you've probably never seen before. You see, this town is haunted. One of the most famous hauntings took place during the making of the film The Exorcist. The author of the book and film, William Peter Blatty, remembers some of the strange occurrences that started even before the shooting of the film actually began. wife kept insisting that she had seen the telephone receiver lift like this right off the hook of itself. Well, I didn't know what to make of that, frankly, but a couple of days later, I was sitting right next to that phone, and it was sitting on a very stable, flat base, flat surface, and it rang, and I was a heavy smoker at the time. I reached for my pack of cigarettes before answering the telephone, and before I could put my hand on it, I watched the telephone, the receiver lift from the cradle, just enough to clear it and fall off the hook. Strange occurrences continued to happen. One of the actors died. Carpenters received mutilating injuries. The producer decided to call in a priest to bless the set. Uh, there was a cessation of these uh, uh, problems uh, after the blessing, after the first blessing. And they did not recur until we changed locations from New York to Georgetown. And they started again, and the same Jesuit, who was my teacher in high school, actually, Father Tom Birmingham, uh, was called out and he blessed us again, and it stopped. But again, I, 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 as, as a Catholic and, and a man of faith, I certainly believe, and, and a man of reason, I think, I certainly believe that... Uh, something unknowable was operating on us at the time. church performs very few exorcisms in the United States. In fact, so far as I know, there have only been three in the last 50, perhaps 60 years. What's that? Holy water. You keep it away. It burns! It burns! Before allowing such an exorcism to take place. A rigorous investigation is conducted, and among the signs of possession are 
clearly visible exterior, undeniably paranormal phenomenon. Well, you know, when the um, Exorcist came out, I think that really started people today uh, into knowing or feeling that they had some relationship to possession, either in their family or that they were possessed. And it stirred up a lot of interest throughout the country, and psychologists and parapsychologists were suddenly being uh, swamped with calls by people who felt that they were either possessed themselves or somebody dear to them was. It just so happens that somebody very close to me is, is probably possessed and needs an exorcist. Blatty was inspired to write the story by a true incident that occurred in St. Louis, Missouri to a 14-year-old boy back in 1949. His family first heard footsteps coming from the wall, strange scratching noises and accompanying drum beats. His personality began to become sinister along with his physical appearance. And red marks emerged on his skin, some of them actually spelling answers to questions the family asked the boy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, by this sign of the Holy Cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, David! Amen. Uh, finally, one must say, well, what really went on? And finally, the answer is, we don't know. But one thing that we do know is, we have no natural explanation for it. You know, starring in a ghost movie is one thing. But to actually live it in your own home is another looking up to see a stranger in the living room, only to watch him fade before your eyes. As actress Elke Summer and her writer husband, Joe Hyam, can attest to, living in a haunted house can be a trying experience. And then, of course, things would move all the time, and it would be very noisy, and the usual poltergeist uh, nonsense, you know. You'd make marks for the chairs, and then you're the only people in the house, and then you come down that the chairs are totally in different positions. After battling the spirits for months with no results, Elke and her husband decided to look for help. Then we decided, well, it's time to look into that matter a little more carefully, and we went to the Parapsychological Institute at UCLA, where, among a lot of other very interesting people, I must say, we met a fascinating lady um, by the name of Thelma Moss. They would wake up and hear noises as, as though there were a dinner party going on. Tables, uh, silverware, cutlery, all that kind of thing. Glasses being tinkled uh, back and forth. And they would get this on tape. What they didn't understand is when they would go downstairs and look in the dining room, nothing had changed. Chairs were there, no people were there, no voices, no cutlery. So that they were concerned about what would happen in that particular house. I mean, for all those skeptics out there, which I used to be, believe me, how do you explain, like, 30 people independently from one another walking through the house, and each one going into the same room, which was the dining room, into the same corner, and saying, hey, that's where we feel it or him or whatever you want to call him or it. It would be a corner where if you pointed a camera, you couldn't take a picture because...